record in the playoffs. That's so. right. Losing uh, to Drew in the, uh, in the earlier rounds won't matter that much if he's able to seal the D here in the top eight. New season, 0-0. Zero, zero. New season. That's right. Nothing matters now. Just playoff basketball time. And it looks like Drew's going to have uh, a slight uphill battle game one as he's going to six against uh, Scott, who's on, still on seven and has the play in this matchup. And as being the two seed, he does have the option definitely going to play first. Going to be some close games. Keep in mind as well, uh, stay tuned with us after this game. We'll be asking our question to give away three months of premium. We're also going to be giving away six months during the court, excuse me, during the semifinals and a full year of premium during the finals of this tournament. So don't you go anywhere. Sunday night, football game's on. You can have that on the background, I guess. But you're going to want to stay tuned here. So um, would you say the most powerful deck card in Scott's deck is Aether Vile? Yeah, yeah, almost certainly. It's you know if they have if it has Aether Vial on turn one it's kind of you know the thing that ties the whole room together lets yep. it play really some unfair magic as you're gonna see Drew moving down to five cards here when when Merfolk doesn't have Aether Vial it's still you know a pretty good deck but it gets to play completely unfair magic when you're violing in Silver Yellow Depths for free violing in you know your Lord of Atlantis or your Master of the Pearl Trident you know in combat to make your guys a little bit bigger um, having Phantasmal Image in the deck as well to violin on two. Really good against some different types of decks. Good against Reanimator with their Legends. Good at just copying Lords, copying Silver Guild Adept. Has a lot of use. Kind of stinks that it's not a Merfolk. Yeah. But it is kind of a Merfolk in disguise. And then one card that is kind of interesting in this deck I didn't expect to see is a Sig River Cutthroat. Hmm. Mm, one of Michael Jacobs' favorite cards. He loves old Siggy Siggy. Uh, it's, it's surprising because Aether Ball is one of those cards that's incredibly powerful, but you don't see it get much play. Yeah. Um, you see it get playing tribal decks. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, so it looks like Drew had the mulligan to five. And uh, again, uh, we mentioned all the terrible cards that are uh, that he has in his main deck for this matchup. Cards like Blood Moon, which he happens to have in his opening hand. It makes it very difficult for him to have a good mulligan then. Yeah. You know? Um, you see Scott. If you didn't know, if you've never seen Scott before, he does play pretty fast. As he has a Silver Guild Adept, now you're going to see a Master of the Pearl Trident. Going to get in for three there. Days on the Sensei's Divine Top, and Drew did not have a second land. So Scott is doing what Merfolk does, which is, you know, he gets an advantage, and then it pushes it over by making them bigger and bigger and bigger and closing out the game very, very fast. Yeah, and you can see Scott's not messing around. He really just wants to close this game out quickly. Um, doesn't want to give a chance to, of Drew to draw out of this one. Um, he knows he's got a, a huge advantage right now, and he's pressing it as much as he can. He is against, you know, the, the thing about Drew's deck, again, he can play a Painter Servant and then play a Grindstone and get the game over with immediately. He's going to need to be able to do that. As you see him tapping one mana here, you see it, you see the Grindstone. So he has one piece of the combo here. Scott going to take a draw step, see if he can add another Lord to the board. You see two Wastelands, an Aether Vial, an Island, a Coral Helm Commander, and a Mystery Card. I think that's actually the Sig in his hand. And it's interesting because um, Scott really doesn't have any permission right here. So... If Drew is able to naturally just draw his combo, um, there's very little Scott can do right now. Oh. Um, and I don't believe he has any removal um, in his main deck. One dismember. So he's one dismember. One. If, if, uh, so it looks like we're going to see an Aether Vial here. And there's the Sig River, the River Sig, Cutthroat. So he wants to draw a card, so it'll um, give him something to do. He draws a Mutavolt off of that, which is okay. We'll bring up Sig for you guys to see what it does. It is that two mana one three, as you're going to see Phyrexian Revoker here. And naming uh, some of the Aether Vial. Yeah, either Aether Vial, and you can't name Wasteland, of course. It's, on, yeah. it's a non land card with the Revoker. Wow, he has a standstill now. So, um, pretty huge draw for Scott. It's going to let him. Um, he can play Mutavolt now, uh, attack with everything. Revoker probably blocks something, but it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, Scott's going to be able to play uh, a standstill and um, he'll play the other Merfolk in his hand, but he can play a Merfolk and standstill. So he's going to come across to everyone. He's going to offer up the trade with the Master of the Pearl Trident here. Revoker can jump in front of that. He will take five on the attack, and that's fine. He's going to go down to seven. He has a Mutavolt in his hand, and he does have that standstill as well. I think he doesn't want to play the Mutavolt yet, so he can cast both spells. So gotcha. here comes standstill. He's going to, he can... Can he draw a card of Sig or no? He missed the trigger or? I feel like he did miss the trigger actually. As he did deal three points of damage. Yeah. yeah. Just playing a little too quick. And there's your standstill. Oh, One, two, three. Did he. he okay, so yeah. Pirate Blast and Norfolk. Draws three cards. 
takes care of the Coral Helm Commander here. Scott has two lords. It is going to be a wrap. And you can see Drew just kind of floundering around. You see a phantasmal image. You're going to see a Lord of Atlantis here. Yeah, so. He's going to copy. Doesn't have any real permission to stop paying a certain, but it doesn't matter. He's got enough pressure on the board to, to close the game out now. Yep. So. And that is seven points of damage. He plays Lord of Atlantis, copies it with phantasmal image. Attacks for seven. Exactly what Drew's at. And that is going to do it. Yeah, sometimes you don't need the counter spells if you're aggressive enough. Yeah, give the beatdowns. Just give the beatdowns, especially against a deck like uh, Imperial Painter. Um, that mulligans the five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes it, uh, makes it a little bit easier. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so um, <laughs> what are we going to see after board here? Well, after board here, we're going to cut to trivia really quick. Then we'll go after okay. sideboards for you. So we're going to cut it back to you and I very quickly for you and we're gonna ask a trivia question very simple game that we play if you guys have ever tuned in before i'm gonna ask you a question you're gonna you're gonna be on the twitter you know twitter sphere and you're gonna tweet the answer to us with the hashtag of scg premium we'll choose from one of the winners and once one of the people who gets it correct one of the winners will win three months of premium the question's actually pretty easy i like to ask an easy one to start okay. the show within drew's you're gonna like this one too within drew's deck you know he has a couple of cards that he can search for with the imperial recruiter one of which is a legend and it does a lot of different things. Three mana two two. You know, it can uh, it can incinerate something. You know, kind of like a walking pyroblast. Has like a big ultimate too. Name that card. Name that legend. That's a good question. Yeah, tough. Solid question. question. Tough question. There's a one of again in Drew's. I think you can imperial recruiter for three mana two two. It does a lot of different things. Got some snappy art on there. A little whip. Could be good in this matchup. Yeah, pretty good against blue decks. So if you ever name that card, tweet us the answer with the hashtag of SCG Premium, and we'll choose from one of the winners, and one of you guys will get three months of premium. Tweet at us. Yeah. Tweet talk, at us. Talk to us. Interact with us. You get the red one. Oh, we got a sideboard in here for Drew. Drew Fetter here. So, um, you know what? I kind of like Ensnaring Bridge in this matchup. Yeah, we saw that was really good for him earlier. Yeah, too. I, I like, obviously, I like uh, two red Elemental Blasts. Oh, That's definitely coming in. Um, pretty good at stopping, you know, Blue cards. Ooh, okay. okay. Um, Ratchet Bomb, also another card I like. Uh, there's also one other card that I think you should bring in, mm. but I'm not going to say it because we just air cast the trivia question. So let's just say there's one other card I think you should board in <laughs> in this matchup, and it's not Fairy Macabre, it's not Tormod's Crypt. <laughs> so, in my opinion, I think, um, you know, Thorn of Amethyst, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting, but I think that's really more of an anti combo card. So I think there's nine cards that he wants to bring in in this matchup. Uh, as far as Scott, you know, he just wants to be able to give give the beatdowns while stopping his run from doing anything. Uh, that's the goal here. So you're going to find in his sideboard, he does have two copies of Pithy Needle. Uh, that'll take care of the old grindstone. He does have a copy of Misdirection. He has a Umazawa Jite, a uh, Cure Great Glass Spinner, a copy of Curse Totem Spell Snare. Uh, threat of disloyalty, so some decent cards that he can bring in here. I expect to see the Muzo's Jite come in. Um, expect to see the spell snares that can counter painter serving. Expect to see the two copies of Pithy Needle as well. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see Threats of Disloyalty come in. Submerge not really at home here. Uh, Relic of Progenitus, Hercules Recall, again, not particularly at home here. Recall's not actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as it can it can, you know, he activates, he has the painter in play, activates the grindstone, cast Hercules Recall to pick up the painter mm -hmm. so then it'll only mill the two cards unless you know Drew's running really good um, so I could see that one coming in as well but it is kind of fringy and it, he has so many good cards in his deck already that I don't think that he would want to board in something you know so fringy we'd rather have like a daze a standstill force will those type of cards yeah maybe curse catcher is at its best here so that will probably be one of the first cards I think will go so that Scott can board in again these pithing needles and some other cards here yeah, Curse Catcher is looking great. Um, it's be interesting to see whether or not Drew does bring in the Ensnaring Bridge. Obviously, um, it would have been good that game, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see what happens because it's also be interesting um, if there is an Ensnaring Bridge in play. Scott really doesn't have um, any ways to destroy an Ensnaring Bridge. I mean, he's probably not bringing the Hercules Recall. Um, yep. But uh, he does have Standstill. Yep. So he could play Standstill and then crack it, allowing Drew to draw three, which might be enough to attack with his creatures. So that's one way he has around Standstill. So it'll be interesting to see um, what actually happens uh, if Drew does bring in the Snaring Ridges. 
Drew plays a turn one sensei's divine top. You're going to see a skull beam turn here off of the ancient tomb and activated it. Uh, Scott's turn one is just an island, so he still is without Aether Vial to start the game. But you do see his hand. He has a daze in there, among other things. You're going to see ancient tomb get tapped again, helping Scott do the work for him. Putting him down to 16, so he's going to, need to take advantage of this, as you there are going is. to see Painter Servant piece one of the combo. And he's just going to pass and back. There's no daze. Oh, there is a wasteland for an ancient tomb, so... That's not um, so bad. So you guys are going to see Painter Servant on the screen. The old Scarecrow. And he did name Blue with it, unsurprisingly. Make those, you know, those pyroblasts, those red only blasts, oh, even wow. better. Drew did not even try to pretend like he didn't just draw a land there. <laughs> so clearly he's, um, he's uh, a little land light here, which is going to make the days in Scott's hand very good. Um, but he does have a top. Yep. As well as, uh, 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 he still has a Scalding Tarn in play that he can um, shuffle away um, if there's not three lands on top of his deck. Because obviously, with the Painter Servant in play and multiple Red Elemental Blasts, he just wants to draw mana. Yeah. Um, he does have a Simeon Spirit Guard in his hand, which could be a little tricky um, in case Scott tries to daze something. But again, I think Drew, with uh, Scott at one land um, and no Aether Vial in play, I think he just wants to generate... Uh, some mana here. I don't think it's really necessary to try to be aggressive and and cast uh, go all in on like a on like a, some card right here, like a Jaya. Sure. Yeah. He drew a card with top right away. Yeah, I'm not sure about. I'm not sure why he did that. They didn't play anything. That was a little bit surprising to me. And why he would do that? Because now he has to invest the mana again. So we're gonna see him play a mountain here. Scott, of course, does have just the Lord of Atlantis in play. It's not going to stop Painter Servant from attacking. Now you're going to see Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah, I'm not sure why he drew the card there. Is he thinking about Pyroblasting this? Now, again, when he hits, he does have so many of those effects in his deck. He has seven. Um, but, you know, you don't want to use them willy nilly. You want to make sure that you use them at the right time and, you know, maybe use them as, you know, reactive counter magic instead of just as, you know, one mana vindicate here for Lord of Atlantis. Because, again, he's not going to deal 19 damage. Yeah, I, I, servant. I don't think you want a Pyroblast here. I think you want to see um, what Scott's play is. You know, you can afford to take two to get a little more information. If Scott doesn't have a land here, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Okay, so, you know. Master the Pearl uh, Trident. I still... Mm, I don't know. I I I would have very I, th I would at the very least sack my scalding tarn and top to see. Uh, yeah, he's. I, just get some more information. I I, I you see I, I think he should have top down and he really just wants to hit his mana. Yeah. You know he doesn't don't you know don't be afraid of of what's what's in play. Just make sure you hit your mana here. Um, now he's gonna he might top main phase and then he might activate the top just to draw a land so he can make his land drop for the turn. But again, he's not using his resources. Um, He's not maximizing his mana, and he's not using his resources to the fullest. So um, even though uh, he, he's got some red elemental blasts, Scott can put him in a position where he just starts draining all of his resources. Yeah. And then, he, you know, again, if he does, as you're going to see, an ensnaring bridge here, and you're going to see a daze. A daze. we have a semi-spirit guy. We should probably use it here for that. Yep. And this was the scary thing for Scott because, again, and Snaring Bridge is difficult for this deck to beat. Drew has a couple of cards in his hand, but the goal of Merfolk is to make those guys big with those lords and give the beatdowns. Yeah. And, you know, because Scott has, Drew has so many um, Pyroblasts and, and Red Elemental Blasts after board, even if Scott's plan is to try to, like, play a... Uh, his, basically, his only plan is to um, play a uh, standstill and make Drew draw four, three cards, and then hopefully he can attack with his creatures that way. Um, but again, Drew has a lot of instants that you could just, you know, hit, hit, with a, with multiple lords in play, he probably only needs to get rid of one card. So, um, and Standing Bridge is pretty good in this matchup, especially if Scott's unprepared for it. And we talked about Hercule's recall in the sideboard of Scott's deck and how, you know, it would be kind of weird for him to board it in. But, I mean, looking at things now, because there are four in Staring Bridges, because you can break up, you know, the Painter plus Grindstone activation, it almost makes it seem like he should be boarding those in. Yeah, I, I, I think he probably did. Um, just because, you know, he maybe in the in the Swiss he didn't, but again, he played Drew in the Swiss. Maybe he saw in Staring Bridge, maybe 
That's one of the reasons he lost to it. Um, now he has perfect information. He knows what his deck list is. So again, you know, you probably uh, board into Hercules Rico just to make sure that you don't lose to it. Oh. Now you see he's just copying Silver Guild up to just get through his deck. So, yeah, so it, it looks seems like to he's me, digging for Yeah, he, he has some way to get out yeah. of this. And, you know, again, it's going to give Drew a lot of time to, uh, to find uh, his um, grindstone. But, you know, it's not going to... He, he's got to... He's just sitting behind the old shield. Yeah, you know, so far it's, it's not bad, but, you know... One Hercules recall, and Scott might have enough in play to just, you know, kill him, I'd say, in one more turn, especially with the Mutavolt in play, too. The other thing to keep in mind, of course, is, again, with Drew's deck, he has all of those Power Blast effects. He has already cast one this game. He has a second one in his hand. He has a Red Elemental Blast, so he can counter, you know, that Hercules recall, unless Scott has, you know, Force of Will to start fighting over that. Which, which, he, does, which he does, and obviously, I think Scott's going to try to um, sculpt his hand perfectly, but the question is, the odds are in Drew's favor because Drew has four grindstones, and uh, Scott only has two um, Hercules Recall. So even though Scott can can trip a couple times, um, Drew just has uh, you know eventuality on his side. And so now we're going to see he has a cursed totem in his hand. He's moving around his mana quite a bit here. One thing he needs to do is make sure he keeps a blue card in his hand for that force of will. The only reason to dump all of those guys out there. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't see why he would really play everything out right now. He has critical mass. Um, if he draws another um, force of will, he would have really wanted that blue stuff card in his hand. So. And now Scott plays cursed totem from a sideboard, a card that we are going to bring up for you guys. Mirage is it? I think it's Mirage. Yeah. Players cannot play any creature abilities, so requiring activation costs. Not um, not that great against uh, Drew's deck. It's just on Dr Jaya and Goblin Welder. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, maybe he, you know, Jaya is obviously very good against Scott's deck. Yeah. Um, so you know, Simeon Spirit Guide in the house. I mean, gotta keep cards out of his hand. Yeah, gotta keep cards out of his hand. Um, but again, Drew. he could pitch that at any time, so. That's true. Um, not sure I like just jamming a creature out there. Especially, you know, y you never know if you might need an extra mana later on. Or if you draw uh, um, another room. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why he keeps casting his blue cards. I think, the, I think the reason behind this is just because, first of all, all the cards are blue. So my thought of him having to keep a blue card in his hand for Force Will doesn't matter because Painter Servant makes everything blue. So he can just hold a land, actually, to, for Force Will. Oh, that's true. Okay, so that, that's the first thing that I actually glossed over. No, but the, thi the thing, the, the real thing, though, is, is that what if he draws a Force of Will now? He, 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 I think he just wants three cards in his hand. I agree with you, anything's blue. But um, what if he only has, oh, is that a dismember? Dismember. Oh. So there you go. That's, um, that's going to be pretty huge right here. But you see a second in Saring Bridge coming into play. So now it is almost integral that Scott did bring in those Hercules Recalls, which he has two copies of. And now you're going to see a card off the screen. I can't quite make, um, that might be Imperial Recruiter. Yeah. Is they're going to slide things over for us. And so it is Imperial he Recruiter. allowed that to resolve, he's going to find a Painter Servant, I'm assuming. He can find Painter Servant, he can find Jay Ballard, he can find Goblin Welder, Magus of the Moon, uh, Phyrexian Metamorph is with something the, he the, can find. With the Cursed Totem in play, um, I think he just wants to find um, Painter Servant, just to make sure that in case Scott does have the one dismember, which he's aware of, yeah. um, he has redundancy there. But So I think the reason you see him get a recruiter here is... He'll be able to, he searches with Imperial Recruiter for another re Imperial Recruiter, gets to shuffle his deck, yep. you know, fix with the top. If the top is bad, he gets to shuffle it again. Uh, you're just going to see a Tithing Needle here from Scott, and we'll figure out what that's naming, if it's going to be Grindstone or if it's going to be Sensei's Divining Top. And it is Sensei's Divining Top because that's a bigger problem right now. Did he not activate in response, assuming that yeah. he was going to be able yeah. to... And you can tell that's exactly yeah, what they're like talking this. about. Because by the needle, that card is as it yeah. as it comes into play, not when it comes into play. So it never goes on the stack. The only time you have a chance to respond is when you're actually casting the pie the needle. And Drew probably just assumed he was going to name Grindstone. Yeah. Um, so they are going to let. So it, look, yep. Yep. 
And uh, I definitely agree with Scott's decision there because, you know, obviously Drew, uh, that's the, pretty much the only manipulation Drew has to find the other piece. Um, he has Imperial Recruiter as a way to find Painter Servant, but he doesn't really have a way to find Grindstone. Yep. That's the big issue. You know, a lot of a lot of these Imperial Recruiter decks that you do find, they're typically... So you know, some of them are mono-red, other ones are red-blue. Imperial Recruiter can find Trinket Mage, you can go through the back door, Trinket Mage for the Grindstone, be able to go off. But, you know, this mono-red version, one of the bonuses of it is that Blood Moon, a card that Drew is playing four of, doesn't hurt Oh, him so wait, did he not name Topfin? Yeah, so Drew wanted to respond, so he's doing all that responding, it looks like, right now. No, but he's 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 topping on his upkeep, so I'm assuming... Okay, Drew responded with top, so Scott named Grindstone. Okay, okay. perfect. Makes sense. So thank you for our table spotter there, clearing that up. So the tops are live, Grindstones are off. We see a Goblin Welder now. Uh, what are you going to do? So if, um, yeah, it's... Not sure what, uh, I mean, hopefully he boarded in the Ratchet Bomb. Um, but short of that. Is there any way for me to go off if that's naming, if that's naming Grindstone? Is there any way to get that off of the board, game one? If you're going to see another Imperial Recruiter here? He has Ratchet Bomb. Um, no, it doesn't look like there's, the, the, the combination Ooh. of, the combination of Piety Needle and Curse of Totem is really uh, what's going to win Scott the game. I mean, Drew needs... Drew's only answer is Ratchet Bomb. I don't see anything else that... Um, well, again, it's so easy to look over this, because I was thinking the same thing. Painter Shirt makes everything blue. So he can just... He can blast it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, he can just... He can, he can blast the issue. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, clearly... <laughs> Hey, we you don't, you don't see this. Yeah, you don't see this deck very often because I keep yeah. forgetting that Painter Servant actually does Painter that. Painter Servant, yeah. When you think of Painter Servant, there isn't, you there just isn't. Think of I, the I, mill. I blame that the fact that there's no uh, piece of paper signaling that. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Put it on Drew. Yes. That you don't know what the cards. So do. I understand. So this is great here. So <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a great position for Drew. <laughs> yeah. He can just uh, he can just power blast the curses totem and then start jying uh, Scott out of the game. It's like a dream come true for you. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean. Scott does have a uh, dismember for the Jaya, but um, I mean, there are so many blue blasts for that. And you're gonna, I, I think we're gonna see him make a move here. I think so. Yeah, there's a blast. I'm gonna try to blast the Cursed Totem. I'm gonna see a dismember on. Ooh! So he's using it on the Painter Servant. The problem is that the uh, Jaya could, uh, is probably good enough to win the game. Jaya and Ixnaring Bridge are. Are pretty good, and I believe this member is his only removal spell. So the blast is targeting the the blast is targeting the totem, or is it targeting the needle? Oh, I'm sorry. So it, I think it's targeting the totem. So he wants to kill the painter servant in response to the power blast. Therefore, I think it'll fizzle the power blast. Yeah. Yep. So it's no longer that color for the painter servant. Yeah. So now you know you see the counter war. The blast is not resolved because of unresolution. It doesn't check out. Now you see Drew activate the top, and so we go back to doing this. So now, yeah, he really needs... He needs another blast. You're going to see... So he's got, another, he's got a servant. Okay. Um, I think Scott just has a lord in his hand. So I, I think Drew has a, a, a magma... Yeah, so I think Drew has a magma spray. A magma jet. So he can scry a little bit. Um, and between the scry and the, uh, the top, he should be able to dig at least four cards for another elemental blast. Two and three. See if he likes what he sees. Scott organizing the board position for us. We're very grateful, Scott, even though you can't hear us. So he did draw a, uh, he did draw a pyroblast, it looks like. Um, is he gonna cast Magma Jet here? I think this is going, that's going upstairs. Two. Bottoms up. Everyone's Clear the top. The um, trying again. Hoping to maybe draw a little redundancy. And if this is a blast, he can't take care of the totem, but he just passes the turn. Scott draws his card. 
And again, he's basically, I mean, if, if we have everything correct here, he's on a two outer. So what do we have here? Pure Pure recruiter. Recruiter. Hold on, it lasts for a while here. Okay, so maybe he just wants another painter servant. Um, and make sure it's safe. Make sure it's safe. He's gonna go for it. He's just going for another pair of critter. Shuffle away, I guess. So, what's he afraid of? Just uh, Scott drawing another um, force of will. <sighs> he doesn't have he doesn't have blue elemental blast on the sideboard, right? Yeah. So his only hard counter is force of will. Um, maybe he just wants to dig a little more to find a second one, just because again he is kind of all in yeah. on this plan, right? Can you afford to not go for it here, though? There's I mean, no rush. You're going to uh, give Scott another draw. Wasteland. Puts it right into play. Hmm. Scott just passes the turn back. And again, two Hercules recalls. It's the best he can do. You're going to see the mana tapped here. You're going to see Painter's Servant. Uh, well, I think he, he probably he, meant to cast Imperial Recruiter. As you see, he did tap three mana, so it may have been a mistake there. We'll see what our spotter and all our friends rule. So, yeah, it looks like he meant the Imperial Recruiter. Accidentally dropped. Accidentally dropped the uh, Servant. So they're letting him take it back. Um, so what are we going to have here? We're going to go for another painter servant? Magus? Magus uh, of the Moon? Alright, well, either way, looks like we're going to try top again. Hope to draw another blast so that we can... Um, be a little safer. Surprising you can't. Again, I mean, it's kind of surprising you can't. Isn't on a grindstone yet? Yeah, but again, with the needle in play, it won't really matter. He has the one blast for the needle, and then he's able to grindstone. But I mean, he he just feels like he needs some protection. He feels like he needs multiple blasts to set this whole thing up. I don't know. He knows Scott only has one curse totem. I don't like the fact that he's just letting him keep drawing cards, um, getting closer to a force of will, it's and possibly that Hercules recall. Yeah. Copy Silvergill. Draw a new one. Pass the turn. Is he, you know, I, look at him. You could tell he wants to go for it, but he just—he's so scared of pulling the trigger. I mean, what goes wrong if we pull the trigger here? He has a Force of Will. Force of Will is pretty much the only card that can stop it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is, yeah. So I, I just don't understand why you would wait and wait and wait and then allow Scott to draw a card and then decide to go for it. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's this, we've been seeing this all weekend. These, these players have uh, a plan in mind and then for some reason they hesitate and they decide to do something else and it ends up costing them. It's like, I I'm not in love with this plan of uh, of not pyroblasting immediately when he drew it, but if you're gonna do it, then just do it. Just wait wait until you draw your second one. That City of Traders should go away. Blood. No, Blood Moon in play? Okay, never mind. Oh, Magus in the Moon, Magus in the Moon, never mind. So, so that's not gonna trigger. Forgot yeah. that he did play the Magus. And he's he's running low on pyroblast and red elemental blast, I believe. Yeah, he's just kind of using them willy nilly. That's the thing. I mean, he does have seven copy of those in his deck after sideway. I think he's used. I mean, he definitely used at least three, potentially four of them. I mean, there is a chance that maybe Scott just did import into Hercules Recall. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right, another pair, sir. Sure. You know, if that's the case, this might just be a long game. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we'll see. Take a I'm also surprised that uh, Drew, I don't know, maybe Drew, oh, he does, have, wow. There's a silver gill. He has a third force, force of will. Take a draw. Mutable. Go. Spin so, the top. Uh, not sure why he's doing this again. He already knows these cards, so, you know, 
Um, interesting to see if he can get the. Uh, I decided to just cast the Simming Spirit Guide. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's just. At, at this point, you can tell he's just. Oh, so he did the Herbert Recall. There she is. Well, the good thing about playing out all those guys is at least he can chump block. Yes. So That's actually like, pretty important. Yes. Now, trying to figure out exactly what does this bounce everything here and can he get in for a lethal attack? That's the question you have to ask here because what's going to be left over? You see a welder, you see four Imperial Recruiters, Magus, two Simeon Spirit Guides. You see all this crap in the way, and those Mutal Vaults aren't going to be, are not going to be turned on. Although Jaya will be turned on. Um, which again, if he didn't, if he didn't cast that Simeon Spirit Guide, he could have mm -hmm. activated Jaya's ability. The thing, correct. The thing is, no, no, Hercules Recall it targets a player for all the artifacts that are. Gonna oh, go does it? Up. Okay, yeah. so Curse of Totem doesn't. So yeah, so the the vial and all that stuff is going to stay. Okay. It's a it's a one sided hoser, and now you see Lord of Atlantis come in. It's going to tap one of his guys. That Lord is sick, and of course all of these all of these doofuses yeah. are coming over. And the question is, does he have enough blockers for all of this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blockers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attackers. I think it was. I think it only has eight blockers. Was it eight blockers? There's one of them at the top. Okay, one of them is tapped. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, Drew's at fourteen, so. Yeah, I mean, only two guys need to get through. I'm just saying, if two guys can get two, through. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Looks like nine are coming in, and he's got eight blockers. He has to block everyone, so he's going to lose everything. Unless we're missing something here. Maybe something's off the screen that we can't see. And Drew is probably not dead this turn. Hmm. That's what it looks like. It looks like he has enough to survive by blocking. That's, that, that Lord being sick, how much does that matter? So you just see like so he's just, just jamming his creatures yeah. in there. Block block enough stuff, you know, let the smallest one through. Take some amount of damage. Right, so Scott has one force of will to let to, to to stop one of the bridges. Will he use it though? Um, he knows Drew has two bridges. I I don't think he's gonna I don't think he'll counter the first one. So one oh the one cruiser was tapped. Yep. So he just has one guy left. Can we get enough cards out of his hand? Well, they're all really, all his Merfolk are really large. Yeah. So it's not like he has to get everything out. Huh. Um, he has to, I think if he can get two more cards out of his hand, he should be okay. I think I'm a little surprised that he didn't Wasteland. Because the Magus of oh, the Moon is gone. Yeah. Definitely should have Wasteland. Just to cut his mana so he can't use it all. I think he just Wasteland the City of Traders. So he does have to use the Ancient Tomb and take two from that. And he just passes back. Draw a card. Force of Will and X. So, okay, so this, the Hercules Recall play, is that even good then? Like, Hercules Recalling, they can pick up stuff, they can lose a bunch of stuff, and then it's just like, alright, you're at six, and now I'm in the same spot. Like, yeah, all those guys are on the board, but none of those guys are relevant anyway. I mean, like, there's a grindstone. He's, he's all in on his second recall. I mean, okay. It, I, he probably didn't need to cast it then. You know, there's the fear of, you know, well, there's more blessed. I have to play around, you know, yeah, so but I he has want to get force. out of the way. Yeah, he but he, he has the force, yeah. And he's not really drawing any cards. Yeah, if you, if you can't kill him there, um, it's a bit of an awkward play because you only have one Hercules recall left. Yeah. Um, maybe he just did the math wrong. Um, there's an ensnaring bridge. So if he has two bridges, so yeah, we're back in we're back in the same position. Drew has a lot less guys. Scott's gonna draw a card. Scott draws Master of the Pearl Trident. Doesn't really change very much. And now he's wastelanding, wasteland the ancient tomb. Yeah, so what does Drew need here? Two elemental blasts? Yeah. He needs one blast to get rid of one, the Pithy one, Needle. Well, one to get rid, one to get through the Force of Will, yep. and one to actually destroy the Pithy Needle. Yeah. So there's your second Painter Servant. So and there's your the second top. top. He has no more Imperial Recruiters, so he can't shuffle his deck. I don't believe. Uh, outside of he, he has, has three a couple, scalding tones. He has a couple yeah. turns. I know he sacked a couple so far this game. Scott draws a card, draws another Master of the Pearl Trident. All right. So let's see, still doesn't have permission. 
Bill doesn't have red elemental blast. Another, Another parent servant. servant. You see him play. Mountain. Play a mountain. City goes Passes away. Back. Merfolk in play. Again, nothing relevant for Scott. Just a waiting game. See who draws their bomb first. Yeah, it really is. Thankfully, I, I mean, Drew is Drew is topping each turn, but without a shuffle effect, he's not really looking at any more cards than, than Scott is. Yeah. Draws a card. I mean, a scolding tower would be great, but... Oh, okay. wow. Okay, so this is this is the kind of the play we discussed, but the yeah. problem is all his guys are so big. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're gigantic. Yeah, so the only thing it's going to really help him with is um, if if Drew actually does get double Pyroblast, then maybe maybe Scott can draw into another counter spell. But again, I think he used a lot of his forcibles. Yeah, I mean, he's already used two forcibles. We know he has the third one in his hand. I think he's got one left in his deck. So he's got one left in his deck, so yeah... Um, I think Drew's still pretty live with uh, with double Elemental Blast, Power Blast, some combination, but it's, you know he's going to need to get it soon. Go ahead. There's a mountain. Spin it up. All right. Just every land that does Drew he finds, he's... does he have even one? Well, go ahead. Draw a card, and so this is the, this is the thing that I'm a little bit scared of, right? Whereas you know he puts every land that he draws into play, and eventually he's going to stop drawing lands, and he's going to start drawing spells, and is Drew going to realize that, you know, casting a spell and breaking a standstill isn't technically that bad for me to give my opponent three new cards? Like, it's not good, but it's not really that bad either. But again, for Drew, if he gets up to seven cards, that's when Scott's going to bust a standstill, put Drew up to ten. You're going to see Silvergill Adept here, draw him an island, and then it's, it's are these guys, do these guys have more power than 10? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Yeah, they're, they're pretty big. Yeah. I, I think he's all in on recall. He can't even do the standstill play. He's got too many lords in play. Yeah, standstill play is going to be tough. The number of lords he has in play, he has three Master of the Pearl Tridents, three Lord of Atlantis, and Merrill Regery. So if you look at Regery and all those pluses. Okay, so it looks like Drew has one of the Power Blasts. Um, still level, 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 level. All that up. See, I think this is bad making him this big. He he only has one other standstill. I just don't see he, is he's all in on a recall. I think he can make the stand. I can, It's very very difficult to make the standstill out. I mean, it, he would have to have it so that Drew's at seven cards and then bust a standstill on his turn and put Drew up to you know nine cards or whatever or ten cards. But he can do that. I don't I don't think so. I, I, Drew's Drew's Drew doesn't have many cards in his hand. Drew's is just. He's got two cards in his hand, and if anything, he's just going to allow him to draw one of his other Power Blasts or Red Amount of Blast, and then he can kill him at, this, at instant speed any time. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, he can't kill him at instant speed because he has, draw because card, he has yeah. to draw a card still. But, uh, Both players, 17 guy. cards left in their library. It might, is it actually going to come down to Dako? Oh, this is, uh, this is it, quite the... Endurance. So he does have the double forceable now. Yeah, so, so now he has two forces left. Drew's going to have to have three red elemental blasts. There's Ancient Tomb. Spin the top. I think um, these are the type of fun interactive games Watsy had in mind when they made <laughs> <laughs> Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see Top get spun again. Are we going to get to a point where Drew just breaks the standstill on Scott's turn to deck him? I think that's I a mean, very realistic thing, if, yes. If, if the recall is at the bottom three cards of Scott's library, then I think that that's something that... I think that that's very, very realistic as you see him spinning Top yet again. Yeah, it, this can get to the point where like Drew has to just realize that Scott could break... The um, Scott can break the standstill by himself, making you draw enough cards. Because <laughs> Drew's Drew missed a couple of land drops in there, so he's getting to the point where he has like five or six cards in his hand, I believe now. One of them is a Simi Spear guy, we know, so that's yeah. good. But um, yeah, it's Drew. I, I just hope Drew's aware of the fact that Scott can break the standstill, so he's got to be aware of that. Uh, Scalding Tarn, Drew played. Let's shuffle at the top. Kind of a big deal, yeah. actually. 
So is, is Scott going to try to go for here? One, two, three, four, eight. It looks like Drew has six cards in his hand. Just going on to five. I don't think it's quite enough because of the amount of lords in play. So, yeah, this is the point I was trying to make earlier with him continuously playing out the lords. Yeah. It's because if you, they were at around seven, seven or eight, eight range. Right now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you look at Meryl Regery and count the other lords around it, there are eight lords. You, you count the seven there in the core helm commander. So plus eight is a 10, 10. So he's going to have to make it so that Drew has 11 cards in his hand. He can't do that. Yeah. But if he would have slowed down and left it so at around, you know, seven or eight range, breaks the standstill, makes him draw the cards, puts him up to 10. Maybe things break your way. He doesn't draw any more spirit guides because he's already cast a couple of them. Yeah. Then you can't remove the cards. Yep. Or he has to like go around like just blue bla or red blasting things, the mm -hmm. cards out of his hand. I I really like to know how many pyroblasts and elemental blasts Drew has left in his deck. Um, if it's if it's more than two, then I think inevitability is on his side here. Um, but it depends on where that Hercules recall is. Yeah. Uh, and the way that Scott's playing makes me think that maybe he didn't even board in the second one. Is he is he concerned that his out is basically te decking Drew? I'm not. I, I I wonder, but it looks like he's going for it. He's gonna try to. Oh no, he's just discarding. Yeah, just discarding. So, um, you know. I mean, with both players having similar libraries, it could just be a little standstill battle. Yeah, it looks like it might just try to be. Don't think he's gonna be able to break the standstill and get enough uh, cards in Drew's hand. Especially because Drew has a lot of instants. I mean, he's got multiple magma jets. He's got a Simeon Spirit Guide to pitch. Um, the thing is, I, I'm convinced that now the, the out of, you know, having Drew up at seven cards and then stand, and then breaking standstill and Scott's turn to make Drew draw three cards, I think that's gone now. Yeah. There's too many lords in play. I, I think that's gone now. But a thing that could happen is we could actually just have a standstill battle where... Where he decks him. Yeah, where he tries to deck him, and then you just have both players just casting a bunch of spells with standstill on the stack. Yeah. And trying to, you know, run the other player out and make the standstill actually target the other person. But that's not going to happen for at least, you know, I think they have uh, maybe what, 10 cards left in the library. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to so happen. There's like four the turns, yeah. yeah. So, and again, if, if Scott has three, at least three Elemental Blasts left in his deck, um, there's a good chance that he could still win this game. But the thing is, the thing is, is does. Does Drew, is Drew familiar with that interaction? Oh, okay, there's so a Hercules recall. There's a Hercules recall. That's the thing. Is Drew familiar with that interaction with Standstill? How Scott can play a spell and then Drew can respond to that spell, the Standstill turn on the stack, the, yeah, and push it back and forth? Not quite sure, but it, I think this Hercules recall is probably... <laughs> We're going to count it up this time. Um, Drew basically needs four... Pyroblast or Red Elemental Blast. Oh, just so him. he's not going to go for it yet. Hmm. Drew draws a card. He wants to get those cards out of his hand. Okay, I, uh, alright. Let's see. Maybe he wants to do it at the end of turn? I don't like that at all. Yeah, me Because either. if he, dr if, you know, what if he just targets an Elemental Blast oh. on... The, the the needle, yep. then he can activate the grindstone, and then okay. Scott has a draw step. You yep. know, he he wants to do it on his on his phase, on his main phase. Um, you know, because Drew will be drawing a lot of cards. Lotus oh, it looks battle. like he's breaking a stance. Though. Okay. One, spell Pierce. Spell Pierce relevant here? No, I, I don't think so. I think I I'd be very Drew surprised. Has too much mana. Yeah, he's making his move. He's making his move now. This, this makes the recall even better too. And we're gonna see Pyro Blast here on the on the pithy needle. Yep. Moving on in. And and, and I, I believe Scott. Well, the Hercules recall is obviously huge. You also wonder as you but, see as you see Scott remove a blue card to Force of Will. He doesn't have to do that. He can remove a land to Force of Will. Makes you wonder if he knows that interaction there with the Painter Servant because all of his cards are blue. I just don't think he wants to use his mana. Um, Let's see here. He's got the other force of will. I mean, Drew's got to be mindful here because I, just, I don't think he has anything else. Is, another, is there only a two blast? Doesn't look like he has another blast here. Two mana? Jai doesn't have another blast. Oh, wow. Yeah. You picked this fight at the wrong time. Yeah. He's gonna spin top. 
Yeah. Why would you play the Jaya then? Uh, I, I don't... I, I would prefer to Magma Jet and Scry a little bit. Yeah, get some stuff get out the, of the You way. know those cards, because one of them's a top. Yeah, this... The, all he's, this. He's really using his resources poorly right here. Yeah, all this stuff should have been happening during the Counter War. You know, he yeah. Jets, puts this the is, stuff on the bottom. This, yeah, yeah. And, and Scott's playing this perfectly because... Um, even if Drew now finds the third Pyroblast for this turn, he could still cast Hercules Recall. Um, and I just don't think that, uh, yeah, he's making him use all his all mana. All his mana, yeah, so, days. Yeah, he, he won't be able to play, play Servant. Um, he won't be able to play Servant, uh, Grindstone, and activate all in the same turn. Yeah. So Scott's, Scott's uh, Drew just uses resources very poorly, even if he, and he did find the other Pyroblast, but it just won't matter now. Yeah, Scott Scott played this one perfectly, and Drew he just took advantage of the fact that Drew just mismanaged his resources. Well, here's the issue now. He has the recall, and Drew has the blast on top of his deck, so he can he can blast whatever Scott he can blast the recall now. So that's, it's not like he that, can't that, get through. Well, that's the thing. Is is he going to do that, or is he going to try to? That's the question. Yeah. Okay. So right. what you see here is Scott plays a, yes, that was awesome. Scott plays a Pithing Needle. He plays the other Pithing Needle, wow. and I think he named Sensei's Divining Top so that he can't draw a card. And did then Cast Hercules Did he recall. get a chance to respond? So, and we just had this situation earlier, and you can see Scott explaining right now. So he is going to, he is going to activate? To yeah, respond to the draw, Hercules Recall. Great. So Drew says, I didn't, have a, I didn't have the opportunity to respond, so can I respond to your Pithy Needle? And Scott says, fine. He said, draw Great a card. Play. Game. Wow. Scott Barentide. That was really well played on Scott's part. 2-0 with the Murphful deck. Beach Drew Fetter playing Imperial Painter. Very well played by Scott. Patience. Patience. Wow. Patience. That is an example of something that we've seen over the course of the weekend. Uh, Drew, not really knowing what he needs to accomplish in that situation, I'm sure it was a very unfamiliar position for him, of knowing, okay, I need to accumulate a whole bunch of blue blasts before I can go off, and I, I'm sitting behind these bridges, so I'm not really underneath a lot of pressure, I don't really have to flinch, but you're uncomfortable just sitting there, draw, go, top, draw, go, top, and then we saw him just pick his spot incorrectly, and while the entire time Scott was just there, just draw, go, play a card, play a card, do whatever, draw, go, play a card. I know what my outs are. I know what I need to do to play my outs correctly and get my outs to get through. Yeah, I, I just don't understand what was going on that last turn. I mean, it, it seemed like Drew was confused as to what his outs were um, because, you know, he tries to go for the Pyroblast. That doesn't work. Then he randomly decides to just cast a Jaya that has almost no impact on the board whatsoever. Yeah. And then he says... Now I'm going to probably Magma Jet you to try to scry more. Like, he just didn't plan that out really well at all. Yeah. Um, 